Hi folks, uh, my name's Tom and I'm a professional psychological safety geek. Uh, I thought it'd be useful to talk, to do a short video about Google's project Aristotle, because as we'll see, it's, it's the thing that really launched psychological safety into the, into the mainstream, into the world of work, um, rather than where it sort of uh, stifled a few, for, for, for a number of years in the, in the sort of uh, realm of academia and it, it just stayed there for, for a while until 2013 but so let's just let's just take a little a small step back um we've already talked about amy edmondson's research from 1999 where she studied clinical teams and sort of codified psychological safety and for a number of years after that psychological safety kind of remained in this in this academic world it was it was quite it was reasonably well known in, in certain circles in academia but it hadn't really reached the world of work the world of business the world of practice uh, then in 2013, uh, Julia Rozovsky was leading a, a project team called Project Aristotle, and they were trying to find out what what makes a high-performing team. What are the ingredients? What are the factors that go into a high-performing team? Why are, why are some teams higher performing than others? Uh, and in fact, they I think they they initially suspected certain factors like like expertise and intelligence and, and other things would would have more an effect than they uh, than they did. What they found uh, out of studying hundreds of teams across Google, Google is so big they can study themselves, that's like a whole separate interesting thing. Um, what they found after studying hundreds of teams was that there were a number of factors that are important to high performing teams. That is impact, meaning, structure and clarity and dependability. Team members need to know, so if we look at impact first, team members need to know that, that if we put, put in some work, if we make some effort, if we do a thing, then it actually makes a difference. It has an impact, right? It, it makes some change. It's, it's of value. Uh, and if it, if it isn't of value, then why are we doing it? Um, uh, we need to have meaning. So we need to care. We need to, we need to give a damn about what we're doing. Otherwise, we're not really going to be that invested in, in, in what we're doing or, or doing a good job of it. Uh, we need to have structure and clarity. This is this is like, super important. This encompasses a whole realm of things, from roles, responsibilities, priorities, uh, boundaries of decision making and practice. What are we allowed to do? What are we not allowed to do? Uh, what's important to us? Uh, how do we make decisions? Um, you know, where, who who are we on the team, and who else, and and who and who are other people on the team and who can we go to for help about certain things? All that sort of stuff. Structure and clarity, absolutely key to, to, to high performing teams. And of course, and above that, uh, uh, is dependability. Dependability is, after all, what makes a team a team. Without dependability, we're just a bunch of people, do, uh, high, even, maybe even high performing people, but we're just a bunch of people, individuals doing work, maybe doing similar work. It's dependability, that's the glue that holds a team together. What was interesting was that teams that sh scored high on these four things, um, impact, meaning, structure, clarity, and dependability, still showed big differences between them in terms of performance. And so the Google Project Aristotle team knew that something, or at least one thing, was missing. And, and I assume that someone on the team Googled for high-performing teams, and they found Amy Edmonton's paper from 1999. Uh, about psychological safety and they used that they used Amy's methodology to measure psychological safety in these teams across Google and they found that in all high performing teams psychological safety was high and in all low performing teams psychological safety was low it didn't matter that much whether these teams were comprised of really excellent capable experienced um, individuals with great level of expertise and qualifications and, and all of that stuff, what fundamentally mattered was psychological safety, because we couldn't put into practice any of that other stuff, any of that expertise or, 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 or meaning and care if we didn't have this psychological safety on the team. Psychological safety effectively mapped directly to team performance. And so um, this was the study, this was the, the, the first that I know of, the first real industry-led study on psychological safety. This is the study that took it out of academia and into the, the world, the real world, the practice world, the industry world, the world of work. Um, and this was 2013. Uh, bearing in mind that Amy's paper was 1999, Google Project Aristotle was 2013. It's, this is 14 years difference. And what's even more interesting than that was that even Google's Project Aristotle kind of languished 
um, in the in, in in the periphery for 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 a, number, for, for a few years until. A New York Times article picked it up and ran an article uh, about Google's project Aristotle uh, and how Google found the, the, the secret to high-performing teams. And that was in 2016. And that was the catalyst for bringing psychological safety straight into the mainstream, dropped it into the world of work like a grenade, and suddenly uh, it took off from there. In fact, if you look at Google Trends, for the term psychological safety, you can see it sort of the term psychological safety kind of leveling off and then leveling off and uh, you know staying level, and then suddenly in 2016 it starts to curve up like that. That led to Amy Edmondson uh, a couple of years re later releasing her book, The Fearless Organization, uh, the, the the now canonical book on psychological safety. If you're going to read one book, read The Fearless Organization by Amy Edmondson. And so this is how, this has hopefully given you a bit of an overview of how Google's project Aristotle, called Aristotle because the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, um, how Google's project Aristotle took psychological safety from a, from a, from a little known academic concept that was languishing in the world, world of academia and brought it into the limelight of the world of work and made it accessible to, to the rest of us, to us, to us practical minded work folks and so um so that's google's project aristotle you can find out more about project aristotle and uh, and the rest of and, and and everything to do with psychological safety uh, at psychsafety.com and you can you can download all our now 178 newsletters as well as sign up to and join uh, meetups online open meetups lean coffees uh, join our online community you can get yourself some stickers you can download some action packs and other sorts of resources and get involved in all sorts of other stuff to do with psychological safety and empower yourself and your teams to do amazing things and make the world of work a safer higher performing more inclusive and equitable place thank you folks bye bye